A new study published in the prestigious journal Molecular Psychiatry has everyone talking this week. It replicates previous findings that showed that advanced paternal age, or dad's age, is a risk factor for autism, and it shows that older mothers also have an increased risk. The study adds something that was not expected, though, and can't easily be explained. Using a group of health registries from countries that included Denmark, Sweden, Israel, Norway, and Finland, the study collected data from 5 million people, 30,000 of which had autism, to investigate the role of maternal and paternal age on autism risk. This is the largest study to investigate this so far. The biggest finding is, is what I already mentioned, the older parents finding. But in addition, younger mothers, these so-called teen moms, as some websites are saying, also show an elevated risk. Coincidentally, this has been shown before in a study in California, and now it's been replicated. But something that popped up that isn't about age per se, but disparity in the age between the two parents, that showed an increased risk as well. If there was a 10-year age gap between either of the parents, the risk of having a child with autism was elevated. So there was a lot of findings here. Let's recap. Autism rates were 66% higher in children born to dads over the age of 50. Autism rates were 18% higher among children born to teen moms. They were 15% higher in children born to mothers in their 40s. They rose still when both parents were older, in line with what one would expect if each parent's age contributed independently to risk. Finally, autism rates rose with widening gaps between the two parents' ages. These rates were highest when dads were between 35 and 44 and their partners were 10 years younger. They were also high when moms were in their 30s and their partners were 10 years or more younger. That's a lot of different ages. We got a few Facebook posts that I think were kind of right on point. So who isn't at risk for having autism if you look at paternal age and maternal age? And what does it mean for reducing risk? You know, I have to tell you with all the genes that we don't know about, the environmental exposures that haven't been documented or even recognized, the interaction between the two and findings about maternal and paternal age, I think we might all be at risk for having a child with autism. The study reinforces, though, that parents who are older do have a higher risk than most of us. Don't get me wrong. This may be the most definitive study to date to show that increasing parental, both parents, increases risks for autism. And biologically, there's a reason behind this, including de novo mutations in the sperm. But this doesn't mean that these findings explain autism diagnoses. As the first author said, and I quote, although parental age is a risk factor for autism, it's important to remember that overall, the majority of children born to older or younger parents will develop normally. In fact, the large sample size of the study was able to detect differences that were statistically significant, but don't rise to a level of a cause. So instead of thinking about this as an explanation about why a child has been diagnosed or some sort of warning for older parents, think of it another way. Again, there's more evidence that the causes of autism are diverse. When I asked about the findings on the disparate ages in parents, senior author Avi Reichenberg said, quote, I think that we're beginning to understand the age of parents may be more important to health and disease than we originally thought. Mutations are not the full story. Studying parental age effects might lead to new discoveries on reproductive systems and mechanisms affecting neurodevelopment, unquote. So this makes a lot of sense. The idea that parental age influences outcome in a child is not novel. In fact, autism is one of many so-called adverse outcomes associated with increased parental age. Last year, a study in Sweden showed increased risks of psychosis and bipolar disorders, and in some cases, depending on the comparison group, ADHD and suicide. In another study, children born to mothers younger than 25 and older than 35 had outcomes associated with mortality, lower self-rated health, obesity, and other diagnosed conditions. So in other words, I know these findings are a bit confusing and probably a bit worrying for some, especially parents who are a little bit older and thinking about having children. But as I said before, don't think of them that way. Think of them as an entryway for figuring out the many mechanisms behind an autism diagnosis, not necessarily some sort of message about a specific cause. Instead of just focusing on causes, I wanted to report on a new study this week about vocational services and how they are successful in men and women with autism. In the United States, the State Federal Vocational Rehabilitation Program, authorized by the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, 
was developed to provide employment-related services through the state agencies to maximize employment outcomes of individuals with disabilities. These services include assessment and diagnosis, rehabilitation counseling, college or university training, job placement, and on-the-job supports. Recently, a group of researchers looked at data from the federal vocation rehabilitation programs in about 900 men and 900 women to look at what services were most influential in employment. Not surprisingly, but still important to be documented, was that they were not the same in men and women. Employment supports that were unique in predicting employment outcomes for men were counseling and guidance, job search assistance, and other services. Counseling and guidance support should focus on job-related skill tasks, but more importantly, interpersonal skills and behavioral skills training. Male clients who received counseling and guidance, other services and job service services were almost twice as likely to secure competitive employment compared to those who do not. But what about the females? There were things that worked in females and males, like on-the-job support services and job placement assistant, but unlike for males, there wasn't anything specifically identified that helped females. Personally, I think there probably are, but they weren't reported in this study. What's important is that this showed concrete scientific evidence about the importance of providing vocational rehabilitation services to both males and females with autism so that they can gain and maintain employment. Thank you so much for listening this week, and I look forward to talking to you next week, and stay tuned for news this week on our website and on our Facebook and Twitter pages.